Hi guys, we're back, and this is Sessions 52, Arnold Chiari Malformation. And this is a rare condition, but it does exist, and I've seen it, and these patients are really uncomfortable when they have it. So I, this session identifies uh, what this syndrome is, this malformation, its causes, symptoms, and treatment. So let's get started about the patient who is identified as having Arnold Chiari malformation. Here is a patient saying, Doctor, I have headaches all at the back of my head and pins and needles in my hands. These are some of the classic symptoms a patient would be having with Arnold Chiari malformation. They get headaches in the back of the head, which may be aggravated by coughing and sneezing, numbness and tingling in the fingers, and if they might even just have difficulty swallowing. And for a full description, the clinical setting step-by-step, -step, chapter 13, Dear Nurses .net, it's just packed with helpful information on this topic. Because these patients, um, they have to have surgical intervention because the cerebellum, which is the part of the, it's under the cerebrum. You've got the two cerebral hemispheres and tucked underneath the cerebrum is the cerebellum. That's the part of the brain that works on coordination and balance is affected. So you've got pressure further down uh, on the brain stem because typically what happens, the cerebellum is elongated instead of its normal sort of glove shape. So let's just take a look at what exactly happens after these people, I mean, uh, the problems that I described to you have been identified and then they have to have intervention, surgical intervention that is. Here we have um, this patient, the doctor is saying I'd like to examine you and run some tests on you and finally a decision is made to have surgery. There's the workups like a CAT scan, uh, myelogram and some of the tests have to be done of course to diagnose this problem, MRI scans. And the surgical intervention, what's done is they do a decompression to uh, relieve the pressure and these patients may also develop something called hydrocephalus which you know is an accumulation of fluid on the brain. Anyhow, the surgical intervention works very well to relieve the pressure caused by the cerebra cerebellum. The ninth cranial nerve may also be affected. Well, we all know that our brains have cranial nerves. Many of us don't even, I didn't know for, for a long time, all my cranial nerves. But there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, and the ninth cranial nerve is the one that is the glossopharyngeal, which is responsible where you have things like swallowing. So that is affected. They might have dysphagia, like I told you before. For a full description, you might just want to go to the clinical setting step-by-step, -step, chapter 13. Have a great day, and I hope you've enjoyed learning.